and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and how could I turn down another round with Shauna? Purifying Blade here in the historic Brawl vacation. Yes, we have to do it. It's life game, but with card draw, so that makes it cool as far as life gain goes. And I love this card so much. Whenever you deal combat damage, you get that life link. Whenever you gain life at the beginning of your end step, you can pay a mana for each life you gain and you draw a card. So on its own, you can get a three mana draw three every turn if you're just able to attack with this thing. Now, the version I showed before is very different from this one. So if you watched that video before, cool, thank you. But this is a very needed update because we don't just have to play Shauna as a control deck that eventually takes over with its commander, no. We can play Shauna with a Voltron deck where we use a whole bunch of effects to make Shauna's impact more meaningful and to protect her. So look at these one mana spells. Look at all the Boon to Safeties, Brave the Elements, Fight as One, God's Willing, Lauren's Escape just in the white cards, Sheltering Light. We have so many ways to protect Shauna and to make Shauna do things like fly, which gets a little bit more value when she hits the opponent. And and it just goes on and on. So yeah, the name of the game here is Protect Shauna. If you play Shauna, Protect Shauna, and then can attack with Shauna, you can gain that life, get that trigger, and drown the opponent, even though your spells are kind of cheaper and not as effective as theirs, it gets under what they're trying to do. And you need that if you're gonna play in a queue with other decks like Rusko lurking about. Somebody's gotta tell that deck not today. And in order to do that, you need to get under it with a lot of cheap, cheap spells. So that's what this deck does. It's Shauna Voltron. Eventually we hope to attach something like Aether Tunnel to make her unblockable. Or something uh, like Security Bypass so that she connives when she hits and is unblockable. And we can use fight spells like Dromoka's Command and Decisive Denial to get that life gain outside of combat but still get that gain so we can draw. It's a really sweet deck and a different way to play magic than I usually do. So I think you'll really like this different approach to Shauna. Let's dive in. Let the Voltron nonsense begin, and to those of you willing to play your Shauna in a new way, you're cool. On the draw against a Johnny Unyielding, pretty bizarre commander to go against. This hand has everything I need, but the Veil isn't very good and everything's slow, so I'm gonna go for better. It was kind of a six card hand anyway because of Veil. This one we will try, we've got two five color lands, which is great. Open on the Sanctum and drop the Haywire Might. See if the opponent wants to put down their Mana Rock now. Leave Kin Druid though. That works. So do we bolt the bird or do we play the Samurai? I don't need to rush to have uh, the Samurai working. Let's bolt the bird. Elysian Karyatid. All right. So I think if I get rid of this, they're going to get like a Llanowar Elf with the Fragment Reality. I guess I'll bounce it and continue to keep them slow. This is a fight spell for a, another creature like that, so we'll keep it. And we'll see if they have... Man, do I go for this though? Nah, let's just go for the Samurai. Too risky. If I get one more land... I can play this and Protector, and it is, the name of the game is Protection. Yep. Ah! Also a Shauna Appreciator. It might hit like an Esper Sentinel, but I still think they'll just hit like a Llanowar Elf if I fragment this. That's a land. We could also hold Decisive Denial for their Ajani. Just straight counter it. Or see if they play Ajani and minus it to try to get rid of Shauna. First, I'll offer them a trade. We've got to decline the life, the card draw, which hurts me. It hurts me deeply. Here comes the big, big Ajan Johns. You realize I do not stand. Going after the might? 
So you have something in your hand and you really want that might to be around. I will protect. You, I mean, when they when they tell you basically, I hate this card and I need it gone, you should believe them. Portable hole. Oh yeah, can't target Shauna, but we can make it a one one, which is fine. A familiar taste, but one that goes no sweeter. Hold up the decisive denial. Going to need to hit some more land drops to really draw cards. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, put a counter on it. Okay. Negate. Broker's Charm. Let's go with white and untap. Gains lifelink twice. They take it. Let's uh, draw a couple cards but leave up a lot of interaction and see what the opponent does here. We're seeking a card. We don't know exactly what we're keeping off the battlefield with this might, but it's obviously bothering them. Woof. You can keep attacking with Shauna. The double life linked. Let's play the signet. Draw one. Tails end. All right, the interaction is piling up. We just have to hit enough lands to hold it all open. Kodama of the West Tree. Four mana open. I'm not that afraid of Kodama, am I? I think we can let this resolve. See what they decide to do. Put a counter on it. Move to combat, nothing. All right. Let's go for a bounce you back to hand now. March of the Multitudes. Okay. There's some creatures. And they all get counters. That's pretty good. Yeah, they were, they were tricksy. They were waiting on something nasty. So how do I deal? I guess I keep attacking with lifelink and grant indestructible to my creature. Life gain is going to be a part of it for sure. When it puts two in front, let's fragment one so, and then kill the other. Oh yeah, it's non-token. Sorry, I always forget some of the things about these cards. Yep, let's just use the savior then. The fairy can bounce another one and then we have interaction open. I guess I'll keep it. Hopefully we draw a land. Okay. Deck is being very stingy on the mana sources. It's the opponent's best shot here is to keep us kind of tied down. All right, I think I have to counter this. Because when these start hitting me and they get land, they're gonna get so far ahead. Now let's see what they do here. Swords of the Might. Yeah, they've got something in hand. They really want to play. It's the Halo Fountain. Oh, that is not what I expected, but here we are. You just let me know All right. Well, they were very patient and their game plan has worked out in a lot of ways. Let's see what they can do with it. There's a land. 
Keep it going. Block. So kill that reduces you to four. So now it's a trade. And the fragment can reduce it to three, but then they get another creature. So no. So now against the trade, we could become indestructible. Kill that thing. We need to counter the Ajani. I think we need to take out the Halo Fountain. Oh, that's not bad. That is not bad. We need to fight it now? That would let a Johnny resolve. So, when does it transform? At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more creatures. Okay. Okay. So, if a Johnny resolves, a Johnny exiles Shauna, which is a disaster. We can't let that happen. I guess I'd rather take on the flipped captain, but man, that is a good hit for them. We're gonna have to find another way. We can't let a Johnny just kill our commander. It's all we have. At least we're still at 45. Now we're at 34. There's a Johnny. There's the counter. And here it makes another 2 2 creature because of Good Fortune Unicorn. Oh, we're starting to hit those lands. Careful what you wish for. Three. Lands! It's at the beginning of upkeep, so if I bounce this... Yeah. All right. Let's see what they do. I'm looking at bouncing the cult leader. Oh my god! Never mind. They almost drew a billion cards and gained a whole bunch of life and hit me for more. The hell? How? They do not miss. Oh my god. I mean, they drew one of those cards this turn and one last turn and guess what it was perfect just the stone cold nuts but we're still at 30 it's not over yet they just have a whole bunch of creatures that i don't have sweepers in my deck for because this is definitely not the matchup i came prepared for ah uh, now we're out of ways to protect our shauna so i think it's sacrifice food and then draw three, and this triggers, it transforms on upkeep, so we can hold. Oh, well, we drew a veil, but my goodness. Okay, opponent draws a land that draws them another card every turn. Ooh, yay, life gain. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, okay. That's... Good draws. I guess I could have responded. Didn't expect them to draw that perfect again. But here we are. Just 
got to keep drawing and try to get out of it. Brave the element security bypass could be a card. But I really need some vigilance. <laughs> really? Really? It's 26 to 27. I have one creature against a million. Pathetic. Opponent goes first and they're Jim Gitaxis. But, 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 we have Malevolent Hermit in our hand, which is a very good card against Jenga Taxes. So that's a keep. A few ways to make Shauna fly, which could get fun. Shauna getting into the, like, wide open queue. There's a bunch of nonsense in this queue. Midnight Clock. Haven't seen enough of that card lately. Thanos Endures. All kinds of ways to make our opponent sad. Um, yeah, let's counter that. I mean, if you counter the ramp pieces, maybe the big... Progress Tyrant doesn't come out to play. Non-creature spells can't be countered. We'll see if that helps us out. And they pass the turn wide open on mana. Will we draw? I, I'm worried about casting Shauna and just having it not resolve because Shauna can still be countered. The other spells around Shauna cannot. And the clock is ticking. So we're not supposed to play into the clock. But I kind of want more than just two damage a turn because that's not enough. So I'm going to make my spirit fly. But whenever it deals damage, I venture into a dungeon. Resolves these. Graven Lore. Uh, I can still cast Shauna then this turn, huh? But can't stop them from resolving this. And they keep all of it. Nice. I don't think we're going to get to the bottom of the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Let's just do Lost Mine of Phandelver. That's a useful card. They don't have enough to play Jin yet. So here comes Shauna. Mass manipulation? Guess what I have? Protection from blue! Boink. Let's make a treasure. Let's take this action and draw up to seven. Oh yeah. And we now have a way to fight the clock. Could be huge. Trophy mage. They want to go get tome, probably. Do I care about tome? Yeah, this card doesn't bother me. Tome's mana intensive and a bit random. What you gonna do? Nothing? All right, let's go after the clock. Can't be countered. Anybody else find themselves destroying Midnight Clock way more often these days after a certain commander kind of showed how broken it is? <laughs> Come on, opponent. What's the matter? All right, we're on the play. We have no blue, but we have Maze Mind Tome. We're against a Serilac, 
a Shararak, a Paradox Engine Mono Black, and we have Curse. So I think it's a keep, we, but we do have to draw into blue. Hopefully Tome will do the job. We also need some protection for our commander, but Tome can help with that job as well. Gotta do this before they take it with the Thought Seize. If their deck is anything like my version of this deck, the whole point is to reduce the cost of the card, and it seems like they are familiar. Seems like they feel like they know me. All right, let's try to scry up blue or protection. Those are the only two things we want. That is protection, so I'll take it. And against black, it's usually pretty good. They have some exile effects, but not a ton. Turn three mana rock time for the opponent. Yep, I've got the horn. That is a reduction on this air rack. Okay, still not blue mana. Still not blue mana. Definite hard mode here. I mean, you could cast Serac for four as your first Serac of the game. Oh, we do that. That that is what we do. Uh, sacrifice decline. No, I'm never sacrificing this. Not in this matchup, not where their whole plan is to cast this card over and over. Yawning portal, I'll draw. Blue? We got there. Covert go blue returns. You feel the stick. If they have a Mox Amber, they should really play it out. The idea is you put it on full control and you tap the Mox Amber while this is on the field. I can't remember if I actually got to do that in my video or not. Here's Shauna. Protected by a selfless savior, and now by a fight as one and a brave the elements as well. Okay, this is plus one plus one to a human, right? So they do have another spell after this, so we should sacrifice because we're not going to save the dog. Resolve this. And then fight as one. Get that plus one plus one to survive the expertise. Also double indestructible, so you can concede now. And yep, they get to cast this, but curse. Decline. Curse stays. You remain cursed. I guess they don't have to pay the extra when they use the Yehenis. Oh, they had the one to pay because it's, yeah, okay. One was covered by the horn. There's the Mox. You're supposed to tap it for mana though when you play the thing. I, maybe they don't know. You gotta watch the whole videos, guys. I can't help you if you don't watch the whole video. Let's draw. Okay, we've got protection. Let's do, nope, not five. Oh, okay. Thanks, game. I meant to go back, and it just skipped the trigger altogether. Always good. <sighs> Could pay off, because we have triple protection open. If every hand, if every card in their hand is a removal spell, we might need it. Target creature can't attack. Um, I want my attack, so... We're a little blue bottlenecked, so let's use our blue mana. Yep, 
Yeah, they didn't float mana with Mox Amber again. Weird. What do they think it's in there for? <laughs> so what happens? So what happens when I don't give my long intros, right? So what happens when you don't go over every possible card in the deck? Do I discard a land? I'm going to discard the tunnel. Let's start growing this thing. Let's clock. Let's get more blue mana coming up. And let's take action for one, please. One. This one. Thank you. Wow. All right. No blue mana open. But we have two ways to protect our commander. Our opponent can't make enough to paradox us. That's messed up. That's messed up. But I get to sacrifice the bypass, state-based effects and all. And we'll set up and we'll replay Shauna and we'll do all this again in a minute. Also, I don't know why they're not sacrificing their sphere. It's really just there to draw another card to get closer to the paradox engine in your deck because this deck is, it doesn't really have enough cards. Thanos endures, that would have been perfect. All right, but let's get set up before we send Shauna out to die again. This turn might also be a good time to march something. Maybe we'll march the horn. I wonder if they'll cast a Sarerak. All right, now opponent, put on full control or put on a stop and tap the Mox Amber. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, right now. This is where you do it. Oh, oh, oh. They're, they're not gonna put the window there for you. My Shaper Sanctuary. Can I protect that? I can. I need that card. It's going to draw me so many cards. All right. One, two, three. No horn. You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay the whole price. I, I would go after the Amber, but they're not using it. <laughs> Packed, huh? All right, we back. Go ahead, opponent. Remove her. I dare you. Caged freaking sun. I gotta, I've, I've got to. Can't let that happen. Too much mana. It's gonna tap me out on blue for another turn and I don't get to draw cards. Unless I draw land. I mean, a land that's untapped. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep both of these open. It's all gonna be fine if Shauna makes it till next turn and nothing too terrible happens. Okay, it's fine. It's fine because they still don't know how to use the sphere or the amber, so it's fine. Precipitous drop. Big action. All right. Um, let's just go protection from black now. So they don't even get the venture. And this still saves from, like, a, an all-out board wipe. And look at that draw. All right, hit him and turn. Resolve. And one and two and three. Finally. Oh, feels so good. 
Let's also Boseju that nasty engine. Guys, I can't stress enough. You gotta watch and listen to the whole video. I show you things. I'm pretty sure I show you the Mox Amber thing in the video. I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure that I sack my spheres almost every time right away. Oh, that's a good card. Let's see if the opponent can pull it off. I think they just played a land though, so they're going to stall out quickly, probably. They get the Warlock class. Warlock class is in the deck because um, sometimes it's really hard to get the Aserok loop to end, but if you have a Warlock class and you can do level three uh, before the end of your turn, you only have to get them halfway dead and then the Warlock class can do the other half. Okay. This is getting ugly. This is getting really ugly, but they are at 11. 11 isn't very much. All that we need is for them to draw some land. They did right to take the Thanos Endures. It gets around a mass board wipe. Yep, two lands in the bin, one card in hand, new card on top. They go to five. They're dead. I think they're just dead. Dude. Ah, oh, it's tough. This is somebody who watches my videos. But, but dude, it's not. By the way, this is, uh, the day I'm recording is actually the day that this video comes out, uh, Aserak. It's not enough. It is not enough to copy the deck. You have to, you've got to watch at least enough to know how most of the cards work. And trust me, I used to do intros that were 10 minutes long going over every card to explain to you exactly how they work. Nobody watched them. So you can't tell me that that's the problem. But, oh my goodness, I think our opponent should have won. They're going to Infernal Grasp. That's a boon of safety. That way... Infernal, the uh, Grasp still resolves and they still lose too. Not that it super mattered. And that's game. Uh, oh man, mixed emotions. I always build my historic Brawl decks card by card from scratch. Yeah! And it takes a long time, but making the perfect Brawl list is very, very difficult. One of the more competitive decks in the format, competing in the Hell Cube, and takes a lot of time and exploration, more than I can put into one daily video. So I'd like to thank the following content creators who I always check out for inspiration and ideas for my deck lists. Legend. Today we're taking a look at two heavens as one, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. Amy the Amazonian. Welcome to Brawl Stars. Today we're playing one of my favorite commanders, Volo. I'm not fine. That is lethal. Wow. <laughs> GG. And the historic Brawl stronghold on Discord. Thank you guys. Great content, and I appreciate the inspiration.